The Organization of Petroleum Exporting uh, Countries, OPEC, says Nigeria's petroleum imports exceeded exports by a sum of $58.5 billion. In its 2020 OPEC annual statistical bulletin released recently, the oil organization said Nigeria's petroleum imports from 2015 to 2019 was valued at $264.57 billion, while its exports during the same period was $206.07 billion. Nigeria imported $41.17 billion, uh, $27.29 billion, and $37.98 billion worth of petroleum exports in 2015, 2016, and 2017, respectively. In 2018 and 2019, the values of Nigeria's petroleum exports were $54.51 billion and $45.12 billion, respectively. And joining us now to explain the implications of this is Israel Aye, an oil and gas expert. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for having me. What would you say is the implication of this to a country that is reportedly the largest producer of crude oil in Africa? Well, I, I suppose what this is beginning to show all of us is that the existing model of carrying out uh, the business of, uh, of, of carrying out uh, the hydrocarbon business in Nigeria is, is, long, is long over outdated. It probably was never really the way to go. Um, one of the arguments I make generally is that we probably have uh, a fledgling, if at all, uh, petroleum industry in Nigeria. What we have had over the years is an extractive industry, uh, which is in fact uh, described by the nature of the rights that the petroleum uh, license or lease grants to you, which is to win, to work, and to carry away. But that rent system, we can see, no longer serves us. Where all, I mean, where the main stream of revenue is just crude uh, export. What is clear to us now is that we really do need to build a barge running petroleum industry. And what do we mean by that? When you talk about a petroleum industry, you're talking about domestic utilization of the crude you produce. You have to invest in producing mid to, uh, uh, to, 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 I mean, secondary to tertiary products, essentially developing your midstream and your downstream, because that is where you're going to also create jobs, as we're going to create opportunities for employment, as we're going to create local wealth, you know, and that's really what it means to have a petroleum industry. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we talk about indigenous, uh, uh, I mean, domestic utilization of the crude and indigenous participation. It is a combination of these two things that really would help us to have what we might refer to as a petroleum industry. In terms of your question, what is the implication of this? I mean, it, it just means, I mean, what sort of business do you run? <laughs> if... Uh, what you import is greater than what you, you export. That model simply doesn't work today. Probably hasn't worked for years, but the urgency of now is upon us to change it. Um, well, you know, if you're speaking about urgency, I believe that, you know, th this, you know, is stuff that we must have known maybe a decade ago. Um, is it disappointing to you that, you know, we still have not been able to make those moves and take the steps that are needed to change this in 2020? Well, as a practitioner in uh, the industry, I usually, as a policy, I don't like taking pot shots at those who run uh, uh, and who make policies and run the affairs of state um, generally, you know. And so I'm, I'm usually quite guarded uh, in, my, in my statements. But the reality is that the world over, the rent system is, lends itself potentially even to corruption. Because what it is, is that you have just a single channel of sell and you extract. But you see, if you, want, if, you, um, if you want to monetize and to develop other streams of the hydrocarbon value chain, it requires a bit more work. We're talking about pivoting from just simply extracting rent for what you produce to creating value. Okay, And so that means investment, that means waiting, that means extracting value back. And then you're not probably going to get the revenues. You're going to get a lot more revenue, but not, you know, not, not as a toll gate. You're going to get it back in tax, in the forms of tax, value-added tax, uh, sales tax, and the various channels and forms of taxation. That requires a bit more work. So it would appear to me that we did not have the political will to do that work yeah. over the years. But where we are, 
we now are facing an existential threat to our economic life as a nation. And I, I'm not sure that, uh, that we will not have that will as at now, because what it really means is that we're getting broke. Yeah. Okay. So we are broke, as a matter of fact, as a nation. I hate to say that, but that's the reality we're facing. Mm -hmm.